He has an extremely rare genetic condition called primordial dwarfism, which means he'll always be the size of a three-year-old. Doesn't like to lose. He likes to be like everybody else. You gotta check you now, okay? Okay. Nick's condition means he suffers with serious illnesses. He's had multiple surgeries, problems with your kidneys, problems with cholesterol, problems with blood pressure. Primordial dwarves have very short life expectancy. Many don't survive to the age Nick is now. Nick, you're getting too old. No, uh -uh. At 18, Nick had life-saving surgery on three aneurysms, bulges in the vessels feeding blood to his brain. Now the problem's back. Nick needs surgery to remove another aneurysm that could burst and take his life at any moment. You feel like you're walking around with a time bomb. We don't know when it could rupture. Scientists are racing to understand how the gene mutation that causes primordial dwarfism works to help prolong the life of Nick and others with the condition. One of the things that everybody asked themselves was where are the older kids? Where are the individuals that are in their 20s and 30s? Over the next three months, we follow Nick, his family and his doctors as they battle to save the life of the boy who never grew up. Hello. Hey. Jefferson is a small city in the southern American state of Georgia. This ordinary place is home to an extraordinary young man. How are you? Good. How Nick you Smith is one of only a few hundred people worldwide born with a genetic condition called primordial dwarfism. Measuring less than three feet in height and weighing under two stones, Nick is the same size as a healthy three-year-old. Lots of mail, huh? But Nick is almost 21. Now hold on. And he's not just physically small. That's your size, huh? Yeah. Nick has learning difficulties, which mean he'll forever see the world as a child. We'll have to find a new one. Hello, puppies. Say hi to oh, Nick. Girl. <laughs> yeah, she'll get you. Yeah. <laughs> SpongeBob Mad Nick is the apple of his mum's eye. Nick is such a happy person. He's priceless, he's precious. Mm -hmm. He's great. Mm -hmm. He keeps everything still like, you know, like I had a child that never really grew up. You want to look at your pictures? Yeah. You love pictures, don't you? Shelley realized early in her pregnancy <laughs> that Nick was going to be small. What's that? That's you in an incubator. I'd had a, an eight pound baby before and I knew what it felt like to have a child growing and kicking and with Nicholas I never really felt like I was really getting big. They had to put you in a little baby doll carriage because you were too small and they pulled you out to do your feedings. And clean. Yeah, and they had to clean out your, your bed. Poop. They couldn't hold you. To, <laughs> yeah, and then they had to clean your diaper. When he was born, he was two pounds, four ounces, yeah. 12 inches long. He had personality, he was alert and I knew when I saw him that we were gonna be all right. Dad. Yeah, I finally get to hold you. You happy, Mom? I was happy. I am happy. Yeah. You gonna eat your eggs? Yeah. Come on. We finish up. And we gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was born, Nick was a medical mystery. Because there was no test to confirm what my son had, we probably didn't find out really what Nicholas had until he was about ten years old. Happy birthday, sweetie. Nick was finally diagnosed with microcephalic osteodysplastic primordial dwarfism, or MOPD2. The essential characteristics of somebody with MOPD2 is that they were born small, they stay small, and that they have small head circumferences, small heads. In general, their proportions, that is their trunk size relative to their limbs, is pretty proportionate. You're ready to go, aren't you? And when they're fully mature, their length is equivalent to about a four-year-old and their head circumference to about a five to six month old. Nick's tiny head means his vocal folds and larynx are also miniature, mm -hmm. creating a high-pitched voice. Very good. What are you doing, crazy? <laughs> 
Older brother Travis and younger brother Levi grew up watching Nick struggle every day. The fact that Nick's uh, the middle son and he didn't turn out like we did, I was after him and I came out to be normal. It's always a question on my mind that it could happen. That could have been me, just like him. You can't get me. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. I always joke around and say me and my brother stole the tall jeans before he could get them, so. <laughs> It's definitely a little ironic just because the whole family's, you know, very tall and I don't know how that happens, honestly. <laughs> nice hit. You want to go get it? You want to go get it and throw it to me? By avoiding the genetic fault, Nick's brothers have sidestepped the long list of medical problems that he's had to endure. Throw it. <gasps> Good throw. Hi, Nick. All right, Nick, you ready? Let's see how tall you are. Nick has had eight major operations, ranging from correction of curvature of the spine to hip surgery. Got your feet all the way back? I got my eye on you, you know. New issues can arise without warning, so he's constantly under medical supervision. I gotta check you now, okay? Okay. Stand up straight for me. Bend over, touch your toes. All right, why don't you put your clothes on? Okay. There you go. <laughs> I've known Nick since he came home from the hospital after he was born. And Nick has had a lot of significant problems over the years. His problems, you know, stem probably more from his primordial dwarfism than anything, but he's you know, he's had multiple surgeries, problems with your kidneys, problems with blood pressure. He's had major spine surgery. His most significant problems now are probably his aneurysm. Nick's last operation was the hardest so far. Two years ago, he had life-saving surgery on three brain aneurysms. An aneurysm is a bulge in the wall of an artery, here feeding blood to the brain. If the aneurysm bursts, blood leaks into the brain, which can cause a stroke and be fatal. Is he getting exercise these days? Well, he was doing the keto until right. the aneurysm. Right. So a lot of now doctors yeah. have discovered that Nick has another brain aneurysm and needs major surgery, or he could die. In a fortnight, Nick and Shelley will travel to California for an operation they hope will save his life. Well, we're going to have to go out there and see some special people. They're going to talk to us when we get out there about doing some things for us. We're crying. But I'm going to be there with you no matter what, okay? Yeah, don't leave me. I won't leave you. I'm there to take care of you. You feel like you're kind of walking around with a time bomb. We don't know when it could rupture. And in some circumstances, recovery or the outcome is a lot worse. So if a ruptured aneurysm can mean... That's it. Are they like weights? Yeah, you could do your exercises. Yeah. <laughs> in 10 days' time, Nick Smith will be traveling from his hometown in Georgia for brain surgery in California. In the meantime, he's at the high school he's been attending for the last four years. I've got a shadow. Who's here? Me. <laughs> hey! hey! How are you doing? Oh, the camera guy. Is the camera guy? Yeah. Nick has no trouble getting along. When he came to me, his parents were very worried about him coming to the high school and being around people that were so much taller and so much bigger. And how are the kids going to treat him? That is not a problem here. You gonna give her a hug? Hey, well, this is Miss Jennifer. She's my new helper up here. You like all the girls I have up here, don't yeah. you? You done winking at her. Yeah, hot lady too. <laughs> <laughs> I love my mama, hot lady. Yeah. Oh, good job. Yeah. Look at that. Look, you're just getting so you're much so stronger. Yeah, I work out. You work out. You're doing great. Nick does not see any difference between himself and anyone else. There are times that he'll say, I'm as tall as you are. And we say, yeah, you're tall. It's going to be right here. He truly doesn't see that he's any different than anybody else. OK. Everybody wants to see you. You're popular. Hey. <laughs> While Nick's at mainstream school, 
most of his classes are designed for students with special needs. Fish. 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 Have you seen the fish before? Yeah. All right, do it. I would say Nick's learning group is around six or seven years old. The activities that we typically do were things that you would see in a kindergarten age classroom. So we've got seven green, green. and seven red. red. So what does that make this? Equal. Equal. Good job. We work on daily stuff like colors, letters, numbers, that kind of thing. What's the first letter? I. No. What's this letter? K. N. N. And Nick's been with me for four years, and we're still working on those same type of things. Good. Now what letter comes next? D. No, C. 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 He doesn't really realize that he doesn't get them right, but he likes to try. And he's progressed a lot over the years, but his memory just isn't the same as what a normal person's would be. Looks like you have a hard time seeing in them 3D glasses. <laughs> Nick is the only primordial dwarf in his home state of Georgia. Well, hello! Hi. <laughs> How are you guys but doing? far from feeling isolated, the web has allowed parents like Shelley to find families with children just like Nick all over the world. Can you see us? Yeah, I just don't want to bend my knee. <laughs> I don't see you, Mom. You don't have to see me, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Jackie Kritzek and her daughter Hannah live a thousand miles north in Minnesota. The network has really become an important part of our lives. You know, I was just starving to find another mom that had a child like mine. Did she have to go through all that? Yep. Is it painful? It's been going on two years. Wow. Hello. Hey. Oh, man, we miss you, Nick. Yeah. Christy yeah. Jordan and her two primordial children, Bree and Brad, are in the Midwest state of Illinois. We're each other's support system. We're each other's family. We treat each other's friends. Yeah, you have to say, hey, call me. <laughs> yeah, call me. Call me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The network is more than just a support group. With little known about their children's condition, the parents decided to act themselves. We realized that we knew nothing about our diagnosis, nor did any of the experts. So the physicians that we went to locally didn't know anything. And so our outlook was kind of educating each other and to find those families, doctors, to be able to help us help ourselves. For over a decade, the families have attended the Little People's Conference of America, where the children can meet up and the mums tracked down medical experts. It was at the conference in 2004 that Shelley and the other mums met Dr. Michael Boba and asked for his help. One of the things that everybody asked themselves in the room was where are the older kids? Where are the individuals that are in their 20s and 30s? And the answer to that question now seems to be that individuals were dying from strokes from aneurysms that were bursting, and they were having large bleeds in their head, often fatal. To prevent these early deaths in people like Nick, Dr. Bober and his colleagues first have to understand what causes MOPD2. That's something being researched on both sides of the Atlantic. In the last five years, we've learned that the cause of MOPD2 is due to mutations in the pericentrin gene. So pericentrin is really important to cell division. There you go. Good job. Good job. Now cells are building blocks that make us who we are. So for instance in MOPD2 we think most of these genes are acting to slow down cell division and because you've got less building blocks you end up with a smaller person. Having established why people like Nick are so small, the next problem is how to help them. One of the important things about once we've identified a gene is to try and understand what health problems are associated with it. And this is an area which I work really closely with Dr. Boba on, is trying to link up the gene changes we find with the sorts of problems that we get. <laughs> so for instance, in MOPD2, we know they get brain aneurysms. Now, they get brain aneurysms at a very high frequency. And that means to us that there must be something about the pericentrin gene which is important for blood vessel formation and how blood vessels form. This discovery has led doctors to look at other vascular issues that could affect children with MOPD2. 
the type of vascular disease that we've recognized to date have really focused on the blood vessels in and around the brain. But as time has gone on, we've recognized uh, that the vessels that feed the kidneys, the vessels that feed the heart, uh, can also have involvement. Nick, do you want to try some of these noodles? These circulatory problems mean that young people like Nick suffer with illnesses we'd associate with old age. Might be a little hot, but they'll be good. Is somebody getting tired? I don't care. My back hurting me. It's called getting older, Nick. You ready to go to bed? Yeah. Hop up in the bed so I can get you your medicines. What medicine? Your medicine for your high blood pressure and for your kidneys. My kidneys are fine. The kidneys are fine? Yeah. It just seemed like when he turned 18, it was the high blood pressure, the kidney failure, the aneurysms. Now it's the cholesterol, and now we're facing another aneurysm, so. <coughs> it's almost like an 18-year-old is really going through an 80-year-old body. <laughs> you okay? You okay? Oh, man. Yeah, I felt something wrong there, didn't you? I think it's just time for rest. Not too hot? No. You like, the, like, you like that? You like that? Getting you cuddled up good? Yeah. Cold my feet. Yeah, it's getting cold out there in at night. Night, Ma. Okay, sweet dreams. Mm. Don't let them big bugs bite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Four days before the big operation. All right, Nick, yeah. let's go do it. Come on. Here, come here. Hold my hand. Nick needs his vital signs measured and blood tested to check he's healthy enough to undergo surgery. I don't want to. If you don't think about it, it won't hurt us that. It won't She won't. She'd be real careful. I'll try not to. All right, right there. Oh, darn it. Nick, where are you hiding all your blood, baby? You're all man. I know, I know. With his aneurysm surgery imminent, Nick's previous operation is preying on Shelley's mind. Never do you expect to see your child come out of a surgery, horrible scars, breathing like they couldn't catch their breath, and it was heart-wrenching, like I couldn't do anything for him. I couldn't comfort him. I couldn't hold him. All right, that's it. You did it. Oh, you can't. Oh, yeah, you can hold that now. He wants back his watch. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> Oh my blood. It's blood? in here. See? Yeah, I drink blood. Yeah, well, will you drink blood? Uh -huh. You do not. Okay, the instructions are on the table. Fill the box three-fourths of the way full. It's Nick's last day of school, and his final lesson is with regular students. I'm going to come around and ask each student which one they want to plant. Do they want to plant forget-me-nots or parsley, okay? Nick, which one do you want to plant? Forget me nots or parsley? <laughs> Putting Nick with the regular education students, it gives them a heart. A lot of times teenagers are a little self-centered and don't think about things outside of themselves. Are those big seeds or little seeds? A uh, big seeds. Those are pretty little to me. They look like big seeds. They look like big seeds? Well, don't drop them, okay, in your table. And so when Nick comes around, it makes them stop and think and even be grateful. I've heard them say that they're thankful for what they have when they start talking to Nick, especially learning about all the health troubles that he's gone through. Nick may not be fully aware of the risks he now faces, but everyone else is. We're all very worried. We try not to think about it or talk about it too much because we don't want to get upset all the time, especially in front of him or the kids. But um, the reality is, is that we don't know what's going to happen um, from the surgery or after the surgery. It's just devastating to us to think about anything other than him coming back to us the same old Nick in the exact same way. Today is the last day of school. We'll be leaving to California on Saturday, so. We're gonna let him stay from school tomorrow. He has, I think, some sense so that there's something going on. He's had a lot of tests done lately, so he, he, he wonders why the needles and why the poking and testing, and he hears us talking about it. Yeah, you know, I'm getting a little bit nervous. 
this trip is huge. It's a major medical procedure to help save his life, and unfortunately, we have to go through it. You want to drive? No. What? I no. thought you wanted to drive. No. So you had a good day? Yeah. Did you tell everybody you're going to go bye-bye and see him when you come back from your trip? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Kumba. Hey, Kumba. Hey, Simba. Kumba and Simba. Kuna Matata. Means no worries. Look at that cutie. Both the brothers are taking time off work to spend time with Nick before he leaves. The surgery in California definitely worries me, but besides that, I always try to look at it in a positive way. Never really try to focus in on what could happen or that, you know, if it doesn't doesn't go to surgery, something worse could happen. So that's the way I try to look at it. Mm. Nick, how are you feeling about going to California? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I think it's better that Nick doesn't know what's going on just because in his own mind he's having fun and he doesn't have to worry so much and be like under pressure and he just lives a happy child life. <laughs> The night before they leave for California, a video call reminds Shelley that they're living on borrowed time. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart, too. Jackie and Hannah have some devastating news about the unexpected death of one of Nick's younger primordial friends. You know, we're really not sure what he's actually passed away from yet. We've got to wait for the autopsy report. All of us in the back of our minds are because of what we're hearing, our risk factors, and, and knowing what our kids already have. And then for you to be going through this with Nick now, that has got to be, you know, just so hard for you Oh, no. I'm hating. I talk. What's about it, heaven? Nick dying. He says he's, he's, in, he says he's in heaven. Well, I hope he hears you guys now. I'm not pain. Yeah, and he says no pain. I think he's just going to go to sleep and then he'll wake up and. No, not stay a possum. You have to stay like a possum. Not day. No, we're not. We've already talked about this. He's saying he's going to play dead like a possum, and I said we don't want to use that example. <laughs> you do just great. You do just great. We well, love you. We yeah, love you. Yo, you I go you, Ham. No. No. I got my mom. You ready? Yeah, I'll play the cake Okay, well, get your jammies in there. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I've been staying so strong with the surgery and just staying positive. And when you lose someone, you just, just really shows you this. We just never know. You know, we know they're getting older. The health issues are getting a little more severe. And I guess with this surgery, I know, you know, here it's coming up, and it just it makes it that much harder because, you know, it's it's reality. I, I could, you know, be facing the same situation. Hey, Nick. Nick. First class. Today, twenty-year-old Nick Smith and his mum Shelley are making a two and a half thousand mile journey to California for an operation they hope will save his life. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, is that what your brain looks like? Yeah. How about you find me which shoes you want to wear? Find me which ones are most comfortable for your feet. Can we do that? You know, I get a little nervous sometimes flying, and he doesn't seem to bother him at all. No, like you. But you don't like to sleep on the plane, do you? No. Never. Any operation on the delicate body of a primordial is dangerous, but brain surgery raises the stakes even higher. Yes, yeah, it's hard to say, but I think it's harder on the family than it is sometimes the patient. Having to say goodbye is tough for 18-year-old Levi. I love you. Bye, Levi. Bye, 
I got an only three left. Go bye bye. Can we like go bye bye? Okay. Can we say hello? Can we come forward today? Alright. Can we like say hello? I will. Come forward, my mom. My 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 mom. Yeah. Okay. Can we like say hello? Now there's no turning back. The ordeal ahead suddenly hits home. I hate the I do too. And that pain opened me. What, what part's the painful? The needles? Yeah, the needles. Uh, once you get the needle, you're okay? Sometimes, sometimes, heal, heal. Those IVs are a little annoying, aren't they? They're dead. Those IVs? Yeah. They're a little annoying, aren't they? And that poke. I don't like poking and, and I don't that like poke, IVs. Poke, poke, poke. Nobody, yeah. nobody likes that, Nick. Yeah, pain right I here. I know. You're sure strong boy, aren't you? How long? You're strong. What's that? I brought you some books to read and... I hate books. You love books. I hate. Why are you being negative? You're not liking like what we're what you're going for? Yeah. You're a little scared? Yeah. You want to talk about it? No. You want me to change the subject and go something else? Yeah. What you want to talk about? My girlfriend. Okay, let's talk about your girlfriend. <laughs> You sure light up when you talk about your girlfriend, don't you? Yeah. Who is she? A Carly. I Carly? Mom, you know think it. she knows you? Yeah. She does? Yeah. How does she know you? Cause I hang out with her. You do? Go she. You stood by the night at her house? Yeah. Really? All day night. Mm. Nick's surgery in California will be on an aneurysm a dangerous bulge in an artery feeding blood to his brain. The size of the aneurysm means it could rupture, causing a fatal brain bleed at any time. You see here on this vessel that is the left carotid artery, we have this ballooning of the vessel wall that constitutes a brain aneurysm. It's a weak spot on the vessel that makes this person more prone for brain bleeding. Surgeons will perform an endovascular coiling procedure where tiny loops of platinum are packed inside the aneurysm so the blood clots, closing off the bulge. That means going in through Nick's groin. Through the groin, we have the natural highways that are the blood vessels navigating under X-ray guidance all the way to the inside of the aneurysm and then we can go inside the aneurysm and fill the void with these little, very soft platinum wires, as you can see here, very soft, and create a bird's nest that will induce clogging of the aneurysm and prevent further bleeding. You got my back? You want your back scratch again? Yeah. I just want to let you know there's nothing to worry about. You've been such a tough cookie all the way, haven't you, Nick? Let me see your tummy. Remember this one? This is the first surgery they did when you were a baby just to try to put a tube in your stomach to help you eat. Yeah. We were in a water park one day and a little boy came up to him and saw the little tube. He said to his mom, look, mom, he's inflatable. <laughs> yeah. I just thought that was the cutest thing. So. Listen, tomorrow, remember last time they had to cut in your skull? No. Well, do you remember when they cut your, you had that scar on your head? Yeah, boy. Okay. What's, cut my brain. They're not going to do that to you tomorrow, okay? They're not going to do that. All they're going to do is put you to sleep, and you won't even know, but they're going to fix a little spot in your head while you're sleeping. So when you wake up, it's going to be all over with. Not what TV? And you can watch all the TV you want. <laughs> Patties. And you can eat Krabby Patties, Mayoni. macaroni, Egg. eggs. As oh. soon as you're up feeling better, you get out of the hospital, and we can go back home. Mm. Mom, you go home. Go home. Go Nicholas. Nick's operation will be at one of the world's leading pediatric hospitals, the Lucille Packard at Stanford University. 
Only a handful of surgeons have ever performed this type of procedure on someone with Nick's condition. Even for an experienced pediatric surgeon, operating on a primordial dwarf adds another level of complexity. To operate in a primordial is certainly different than to operate in a child of same size. Because the primordial have different characteristics on the blood vessels, on the anatomy of the brain, and changes in many of the other organs and systems that a child of the same size would not have. That creates a much more fragile system that you have to be prepared to deal with. So a brain aneurysm has the potential of bleeding at any second. There is a real possibility Nick's aneurysm could rupture during surgery. If that happens, there's a 50% chance he won't make it. Knowing the odds leaves Shelley struggling with her decision to go ahead with Nick's operation. The reality is that we don't know what's going to happen with our children. We don't know how long we have them. But it's almost like, you know, would you walk around and want to have him with a time bomb or correct him, knowing that coming out of this process, he might not have the quality of life that he once had, nor would he make it. With Nick's aneurysm surgery underway, his future is in the surgeon's hands. operation was a success. The coil was inserted without his aneurysm rupturing. Hey. Mom. Hey. Mom, mm -hmm. Did you make it through surgery? Uh-huh. It's all over, isn't it? No more surgeries. No more pokes. Yeah. Mm. Needles. No more needles. I'm following you, boy. You yep. lead the way. I'll follow. This is your walk. After only three days in hospital, Nick's allowed home to his family. Where are they next? To me. Oh. Take that. Dad, come get me. Come on, Nick. Oh, yeah. I got a shotgun, Dad. After the surgery, Nick, you know, he actually jumped right back to normal, just like Nick always does, and it's just lucky for us, but it's great. It's now a month after Nick's surgery. Shelley and Nick are flying to Minnesota. After everything that we've been through, my goal is just to enjoy life. And me and Nicholas, we're going to go have a lot of fun and just embrace every moment that we can together. You all right back there? Yeah. All right, good. What makes him happy is he's a funny person. He understands fun and laughing and cutting up. And that's the healthy part of life. You know, for us to be able to spend some time and share a trip together and put all that stuff behind you for a week, that's what we're looking forward to. Their friends from the network are coming from around the country for a surprise celebration for Nick. It's the first time the group has met outside the annual Little People's Conference. All right, picture perfect. Smiles. Hey, Emma, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> now, it's real slippery, guys. You're in Minnesota, remember? Yeah, we know. You're not in Kansas anymore. It's minus five degrees in Minnesota. So Nick and the gang are starting their day out inside at the Sea Life Aquarium. Nick's primordial friends are 21-year-old Brad, Brad's older sister Bree, who's 23, 17-year-old Hannah, and Trinity, who's 10. For us to get together as primordial families, it's one of the best experiences, because the kids, they are just like best friends. They're almost like sisters and brothers. Hi. Hey. hey. We get together once a year. We do a lot of stuff. Have fun. Whoa. There's that big fish. I'm going to eat you. <laughs> so Sometimes it's nice to see other little people. That one's creepy, because they're not tall, and they're all like me. Look! Whoa! Go! <laughs> Why, you see that? I see it. Oh, look, he's a kitchen, Nick! <laughs> <laughs> he 
love you, Nick. <laughs> we're just, we're made like this. We do a lot of things that people think are too hard for us. They think we can't do it, but we'll find out how to do it ourselves. As a special finale to the day, there's a surprise for Nick. He's finally going to meet his hero. One of our things is we want them to live their lives to the fullest and have every dream or hope that they can have come true. So that they live while they're alive and they live and feel important. I would like to do a celebratory toast. I want everybody to raise their glass and just say, here, here. Here, here. We love you, Nick. We love, we love you, Nick. Yeah. For all of the mums, it's important that the children celebrate while they can, because the harsh reality of their lives is never far away. Don't hurt me. Yeah, don't hurt me. How special is that? Each parent has to make a decision of how open they are to discuss the realism of their illnesses, the outcomes, the treatments. Well, for Brie and Brad, we've always been very upfront. It's still only like 90 over 64, so I don't think you should probably take it again tonight. And to me, it empowers them to take care of themselves. Tonight, all you have to take is this one. It helps them understand why they go through mundane testing, why they take multiple pills, why they have to go to the doctor five states away. It helps them be that person to pave the way for the next little guy. I was very worried about Nick going to surgery. Me too. I think he was pretty nervous. I would be nervous. I had my surgery. I was pretty nervous. I think everybody is. I was when I got my bag. I don't like medical stuff. Uh, I just don't like anything with surgeries or anything. I don't want to be no doctor, that's for sure. For the children, understanding their condition doesn't make accepting it any easier. It's really sad because we lost uh, one of our kids. Makes me sad. For Hannah, that is kind of put into perspective for her they were my age, Mom, and they're not with us anymore. And then the tears, and that has been the hardest thing. And uh, you know what I we have to say is that you know we don't know how how long you're going to have. None of us do. We're all human beings. You know we have God has a plan for all of us. So we're just going to live each day like it's our last day. But not just you. We're all going to be doing that. We each have today. We're not promised tomorrow. Yeah, see my hooker? Yeah, I see it. Nick doesn't have the same level of understanding as the rest of the group. And for his friends, that's a good thing. I don't think he really thinks about it. I don't think he does either. I think he just... He, he just does what he needs to do and have a good life. And be funny. Be really funny at times. He's always happy. <laughs> yeah, he's always happy. Nick and his friends are doing well for now. But the big question remains, how can their short lives be prolonged? The holiday to Minnesota gives Nick and his friends a chance to hang out with people who are on their level. See that, buddy? Mm-hmm. It's probably one, not a good idea for him to have the CAT scans, so... But it also performs a vital function as a forum for the mums to discuss medical developments and new ideas. The outsider looking in may think this is something that medical experts should know, but if we don't know and there's only one 
child in that state or one child in that country, how do we expect medical professionals to know? That's one thing I wanted to know. Without these groups and this organization, there would be no research. There would be no progress at all. This whole field owes everything to those groups. It's my turn. Okay, you can... If I see one child, all I can do is do my best for that one child. But if I see 20 children with the same rare condition, now I have a much clearer idea about how to take care of that one child. And that's really what's happened. In a crisis isn't the time to try to remember, right? You know? No, I, and then it's all put on that USB. Right. right, and there's an access online. The medical research pursued by these mothers means treatment for their children has gone from reactive to proactive. Early screening for aneurysms, monitoring cholesterol, and management of renal failure means these children now live longer. The life expectancy for people that have MOPD2 is not average. It's definitely shorter, but it's improving. It's much better now. Because of the screening program for aneurysms, the treatment programs that we've put in place, we are seeing individuals live longer. You do look like a mommy. There are many more people in their 20s, in their 30s with MOPD2. So I think that age is being pushed up and people live longer and longer every year. As this generation is living into their 20s, the friends can have ambitions in life beyond childhood. I'm in 11th grade. Next year, I graduate. I haven't planned on what I'm doing yet till I get out of school yet. I love entertainment stuff, acting. Acting where I'd be in a band. I wanted to play the drums. I know how to play the drums. Yeah, you do, buddy. Yeah, you do. I'm a good, better at acting than I am a singer. Same with me. That's all I know. Um, Tell me. I'm, I'm nice and funny. Yeah, you are funny, buddy. Nick, I think he wants to be a comedy. <laughs> he is funny, isn't he? What are you doing? Because he likes to tell a lot of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Back at home in Georgia, Nick's about to start a new phase of his life. Squeeze me. <laughs> He's about to turn 21, and that means moving on from the pediatric doctor he's always known. So, Nick, uh -huh. everybody's going to miss you. You know yeah. that? Uh huh. Huh? Uh huh. Do you understand that mommy's going to have to find you a new doctor? Uh huh. Yeah, you're getting too old. Yeah. Hitting 21 also means only one more year at school. What is it called? Um, it's the Constitution. Constitution. People have rights, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. This world is not built for Nick, you know. This world is not accessible to him. And so we try to put everything into every day just to make him have as many experiences and as many happy moments as we can possibly fit in. Nick's lifespan may be limited, but for the family, Nick still has hopes and dreams for his future that are no different to anyone else's. We love it. I told you you could do it. He doesn't like to lose. He likes to be like everybody else. He wants to be able to ride four wheelers and do everything we do. The biggest thing is I want him to feel that he is just like everyone else. And he is just like everyone else inside. You know, he has big dreams. He thinks he's going to grow up and be just like his daddy one day. I'll get you out of those jackets. Yeah, I know. He still lives, I think, in a beautiful place. It's kind of like not reality, but it's in his world. He's still going to achieve and, and be whoever he wants to be. And, and that, to me, is a beautiful thing. Mom, he's killing me. I know. Thank you.